<laughs> so uh, I forget who I was joking with as well. I mean, you know, we've got all of this crazy stuff, these programs, activities, and everything, but um, the baseline success for me was just getting everybody in this room. I think if we got all the biohackers here with nothing else in just a room, we would have an unbelievable weekend and do unbelie um amazing things. So just getting you guys here, I think to me was a huge success. So thank you all again so much for coming. Um, okay, so uh, I wanted to start just by sharing with you guys a little bit kind of the journey of how we got to this moment and to uh, this event. So um, for you guys that don't know, I should say, uh, my name is David Kong. Um, I'm a longtime synthetic biologist uh, working in the technical field, but um, I'm also a photographer, a DJ, and probably the most important thing that I do, I think, is I'm a community organizer. So I love communities. I think that um, communities are what make the world go round, and our ability to kind of organize communities together to do impactful things, I think, is uh, you know, a big way that we shape and move the world. And so um, this is a photograph that I took at my community center uh, here in Central Square, which I think many of you visited yesterday, called EMW. And this photograph to me is kind of like the faces of you know, my dream of what you know, kind of biotech in the world could look like, right? In our space, um, we work uh, and we focus a lot on really, really diverse groups. So socioeconomically diverse groups, culturally diverse groups, creatively diverse groups. And um, to me, you know, I think you guys so deeply represent that as well. And um, uh, you know, it's just such an honor and privilege to have you all represented here as well in this space. And so we started doing um, kind of uh, community biology stuff uh, several years ago. Our own history goes back around 10 plus years. So we've, uh, in my space, EMW, we've done work in um, kind of poetry and art and music, and we have this wonderful gallery. Um, but a few years ago, around 2014, we started doing our own biohacking events. And this was actually the first one we ever did with Justin, uh, who I think is in the room someplace, uh, with some colleagues at the Media Lab. And so, um, you know, we got into kind of the DIY bio movement uh, around that time and started organizing our own events and building out our own laboratory. And, uh, you know, again, having workshops and um, organizing galleries and just in general, you know, kind of really embracing the spirit of bringing biotechnology to um, the public and really trying to share biotech beyond kind of the traditional corporate um, government and uh, academic spaces. And so, you know, I think uh, for me, it's been really an amazing kind of thing to see biotechnology start to move in this direction um, where we're starting to transcend a lot of the kind of traditional institutional boundaries. And so, you know, we've been had a lot of fun in our space doing things like teaching this class how to grow almost anything to the global network of fab labs and community labs. And, um, and it's just been a really great joy over the past, uh, past couple of uh, years in our space. And so um, I actually joined the Media Lab. Um, I did my grad school here, but I joined the lab about four or five months ago now. And um, I direct here at the lab a community biotechnology initiative. So our whole initiative is basically about thinking about you know, how do we take the tools of biotechnology? How do we make them more accessible? Um, how do we share them? How do we build infrastructure for sharing protocols and design files? And um, how do we organize the humans? How do we create great events and let people um, kind of in the broader community connect and make biotech something that is truly accessible to everyone and so you know at this point I'd like to say here too you know we're here at the media lab and I think the lab is you know again you know we're at MIT which is one of the most privileged institutions in the world and for me personally you know I feel like it's our duty you know when we are when we have access to privilege and we have the ability to you know try to fly people out from places in the world that couldn't normally come to a place like MIT or you know try to leverage that privilege we should and we really have a responsibility to use it um, to try to make the world a better place so um, I'm really yeah yeah, Michael. <laughs> so, you know, I know, I know you guys all do that in your lives, and, um, you know, I'm grateful to the lab and to Joey for, for um, really kind of pr providing this platform um, and having the Media Lab be a place where, um, you know, we really can welcome uh, folks from all around the world to, to um, explore technology, in this particular case, biotech. So, um, uh, this is my job. I, I, I can't even really describe exactly what's happening in this photograph, but... Um, you know, this is, I get paid to do this, whatever that is. Um, so uh, I have a really, really wonderful time here at the Media Lab. And um, to kind of, uh, uh, kind of bring it uh, closer to what's happening today, you know, soon after joining the lab, maybe like a week or so in, um, I went to this really wonderful event that was organized by the GenSpace community over in New York um, that was kind of exploring the engagement between community labs and uh, the FBI here in the US. And so this kind of connects back to a pretty historic meeting in 2012 in Walnut Creek where the FBI gathered kind of laboratories from all around the world. And I'm kind of curious how many of you were at that event in 2012? Okay, that's awesome, because I definitely met a lot of you guys there at the very first, for the very first time, and um, you know, who knew then, uh, you know, five, six years ago that this movement would become what it is right now? 
And so, um, you know, again, in the US, right, we would have these meetings and we would always have like a follow up meeting where we would be like, man, you know, we really need to organize an event that's like not about the FBI or not about, you know, some other entity, but it's about us, right? It's about the community. And so, um, you know, at that time I joined the lab and, you know, at this meeting we were like, okay, you know, I really feel like we could pull this thing together at the media lab. And I looked on the calendar and the only weekend that was available was this weekend, this year, okay? And so it was like, whatever, three, four months away, and I was like, man, do we like wait a whole year, or do we just try to hack one now? And you know, we're hackers, right? So we're like, this is MIT, MIT is the home of the hack, so we're like, all right, we're just gonna hack this event now. So uh, that's what we did, and um, you know, it's not perfect, everything is, you know, uh, kind of a, a beautiful chaos, I guess, but you know, thank you all for your, in advance for your flexibility and your patience with us. So, um, so after this event, um, I had the good fortune of traveling to Switzerland um, to an amazing event called Biofabbing Convergence. And I met a lot of you there at Biofabbing. Um, so it was a really, for me, um, a real eye-opening experience to interact with a lot of the folks, Adam will be here tomorrow, uh, a lot of the folks from all around the world who you know, I wasn't aware of. And again, you know, in Europe, in Asia, there's so much work happening in community bio and biohacking. And uh, for me, this was my first kind of time uh, in meeting many of you. And I was so inspired from that particular meeting um, and really, really enjoyed uh, myself. Um, and so, you know, again, it was, and I think so many of you guys are, are here today in this room right now. So um, biofabbing for me was a really, really big moment. Um, and then after biofabbing, I was in Singapore for uh, SB 7.0 and met some really wonderful folks like Adeline. You guys are all gonna get to know Adeline. She's super amazing. Singapore DIY bio is in the house. Um, and so, so it's, uh, it was a really, really kind of great swing through there. And then I was in Tokyo and um, got to meet, and these are all different photographs. This is like my kind of, uh, I guess my, uh, uh, you know, biohacking photo album or something, I don't know. But uh, uh, so this was in Tokyo, and I got to hang out with Georg and Hiro, and um, all the folks with Digital Garage and Bio Club. And um, just in general, you know, really, really enjoyed uh, connecting and meeting with you all. So, you know, I'm from Lexington, Massachusetts here. And so, you know, here we've got like the start of the Revolutionary War and like Paul Revere. So I, was, I felt like kind of like, you know, this Paul Revere, like going around the world being like, come to MIT, come to the Bio Summit. And you guys came. So, you know, really, really appreciative to all of you. So um, in the spirit of community and in the spirit of you all being here, um, what I wanted to do to start this whole event was actually for uh, all of you to just take two minutes, okay, and find somebody that you don't know, okay, at your table or near you, and basically take one minute and introduce yourself and then share an intention for the weekend. So just say something about, you know, something you hope to learn or something you hope to get out of this weekend or friends you hope to make or whatever it might be. And so share that with that other person. And what we're gonna do is, okay, this is gonna be a bit like time travel, okay? You know, right now, you know, we're starting, you know, maybe you don't know a lot of people and so on, but by the end of this event, Sunday, five o'clock, we're gonna have gone through so much crazy stuff together. And really, you know, this is the spirit of this event is a family reunion. So um, we're gonna check back in in the closing, five o'clock on Sunday, and you're gonna find that person again and check back in and say, hey, how did we do, right? Did you actually succeed in fulfilling that thing that you did? Okay, does that, does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, so two minutes, go for it, find somebody. Go ahead.
All right, everybody. You guys can clap once if you hear me. <laughs> clap twice if you hear me. <laughs> clap three times if you hear me. All right, so that little technique right there, you should all know it. It's like a community organizer trick. It's like the best thing I know to get a whole room to quiet down. So if you guys, feel free to borrow it. All right, so you shared your intention, and we're going to check back in Friday at, or on Sunday at 5, OK? So thank you guys all for doing that. That was actually a really, I really uh, enjoyed watching you all uh, connect with each other. So OK, so a little bit about um, who is here and how this all happened. So when we first started organizing this, this, this event was literally um, shared via one Facebook post. So I, I shared one Facebook post. And then you know, initially when we started, we were like, man, you know, I think if we get like 50 or 75 people, it would be a really, really great event. And um, uh, you know, we started getting you know, you know, 50 applications and 75. And the, and the initial intention was to accept everybody that wanted to come. And um, we got 100, 125, 150, 175. We ended up with over almost 300 applications from all around the world. Okay, so, and what that told me was just that there's a real hunger for um, this event. I mean, and just you know, Jason Bob's in the house. I didn't send an email out to DIYBio.org. Like that, that, that listserv never got this information, right? So, so I don't know how it propagated to all of you, but literally went to all corners of the world. And so, um, you know, in terms of the folks that are here, and thank you to Dan Hernandez for putting together this fancy, this this really nice chart. Um, you know, we really have a, a global group here. Um, which to me is really, really incredible, and I think speaks also to the diversity of the folks in the room. And so that kind of flows me into the next thing, um, which is our community guidelines for the weekend. Okay, so um, just to set some kind of code of conduct and some norms, I've got a couple. So uh, number one is be open, be respectful. Okay, so again, we've got a really, really diverse set of opinions in this room. We have some people in this room that think that um, you know we should really, really be engaged with regulators and policymakers and law enforcement. We have other people in this room that are like, I don't want to do anything with law enforcement. We have people that think that you know intellectual property and innovation is going to be the way to go. Other people think we should open source everything. So you know we've got a really, really big set of diverse opinions. And I think um, you know challenge yourself, be open-minded, listen, learn something, and and so uh, you know keep that in mind. Be open and then be respectful, please. Um, second one is re please respect the space, okay? So this whole sixth floor of the Media Lab is all yours. So you are all free to hang out in these beautiful spaces and just have those great conversations, build and connect with everyone. But please respect the space. Um, this furniture, most of it actually comes from other students uh, and staff and faculty in the lab who let us borrow it um, because they believed in us and believed in this event. So um, you know, this, this house is your, our house is your house, so please treat it like your own house. Please. And um, again, you know, take care of each other too, right? We're all going to be a big family here together. So if somebody else needs something, is having trouble, whatever, um, please help them uh, as well. And uh, you know, some simple rules, OK? So my apologies about this rule in particular, but the main media lab, the second and the fifth floors, especially over the weekend, are actually closed, OK? So they're closed off to our group. Um, and there's a variety of reasons for that, mostly because there's a lot of research that's happening that um, needs to kind of stay under wraps and isn't public. However, um, You'll notice that people walking around have green lanyards, some of us, okay? So the green lanyard people are organizers, and almost all of those people with green lanyards are actually from the Media Lab. They're either students or staff or faculty. Can you raise your hands, actually, if you have a green lanyard on? So, so you see those people that are raising their hands? Make friends with those people, okay? Make friends with those people, because if those people want to take you to show them, show you their cool project or whatever, that's totally cool, okay? So uh, the Green Lanyard people, uh, they are going to be especially attractive this weekend, I suppose, okay? Um, I, I didn't share this with you all, but um, there actually is also an official Media Lab tour happening Monday morning. So I have never been on one of these before, actually, myself, but I hear they're amazing. Um, and so you can sign up for it at the front desk at the info point if you want to join, if you're still here Monday morning. So um, there will be a full tour then um, where you can check out the whole rest of the lab. And then finally, um, please keep your lanyards on, especially over the weekend. If we're um, The hands-on activities, the wet lab, is not in this building. It's across the street. And so if you're kind of wandering around and MIT police is like, who are these people? Um, if you have your lanyard on, they, they know about this conference. So uh, they won't give you any problems. So please just make sure you keep that lanyard on. Um, 
Second, uh, please be patient and flexible with us. You know, again, I think uh, things overall are, are smooth and I think are gonna be smooth, but you know, there's inevitable chaos that's gonna happen, so uh, please be patient with us. Uh, you know, when I, when I teach this class, How to Grow Most Anything with uh, Jean-Michel and with George, um, you know, one of the first things we talk about is like how we're building the airplane while we're flying it. And so this conference is very much a hack and we're also kind of building it while we're flying it. So uh, please be patient with us, but remember that everything is gonna be awesome no matter what, okay? All right, um, and a third community guideline, and this is a really important one, is please participate and challenge yourself, right? You all, all traveled from really, really far to be here, so now is not the time to lay back. Now is the time to push your boundaries, to have that conversation that you want to have, to lead that unconference. I really, really hope you all take an opportunity to lead something this weekend, okay? Um, this space and this event is for you, so push yourself. This is a, a real, we have a real opportunity to do something awesome here, so uh, please challenge yourself. And again, this time and space is for you, and um, it's been beautifully laid out by Nicole Bakker, and I'm gonna thank her more deeply in a moment, but um, we've got all of these different wonderful areas, all named after different organelles of the cell, of course. So uh, explore. Um, in particular, I wanna shout out the Biodesign Challenge. They've got a beautiful gallery that you guys have already probably seen set up over there, so please explore, hang out, and just enjoy this beautiful space. Um, in terms of the program, uh, you know, basically, it is gonna flow from structured to least structured, unstructured. So today is the most structured. We're pretty packed to the brim with like talks and panels and so on. Um, but starting tomorrow, we're gonna start having unconferences that go in parallel with the main event and the, or the main room here. And then Sunday is all unconference with the exception of a, a fireside chat with George. So, um, so, and there's gonna be hands-on activities every single day as well, okay? so. Uh, and again, currently, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when you walk right in, there's that wall that has a big grid on it. Um, that's the unconference wall. So again, you guys have that Word document. Everybody's been filling it out. You've all got your sessions. Just find a box. Each one of those boxes is one hour, and just put your session in. With your session leader, go in and lay it out and put it in. So today, we're not going to do unconference, but we'll start tomorrow. So self-organize, find a spot that you like, and go for it. Um, okay, at this point, I want to introduce to the stage somebody very important. Uh, Money is going to come up over here. Come on up, Money. So, okay, yeah, let's just round of applause for Money, okay? So, um, so Money um, has been, I, I, really, I really can't thank you enough, Money, for all of your hard work. Money has basically been uh, the, the guru of the wet lab and has been organizing every single one of the workshops. So, we have over 20, 20 hands on workshops and demos for you guys this weekend, all run by you. But, you know, Mani has been ordering stuff, chasing down you guys. What part do you need? Do you have a stove? Oh my God, I need onions. Like, what do I do with this cheese maker? Like, like my office right now is exploding with the weirdest stuff that you guys all want. I don't even know what this stuff is. He would like walk into my office and be like, hey, David, is it okay if I like order this like battery powered like laser gun? I'm like, uh, I guess if somebody needs a battery powered laser gun, I don't know. So, uh, so anyways, Mani, you've been amazing. Thank you, and uh, I'm gonna let you talk a little bit about the workshops. One more round of applause. For Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Okay, my name is Long Mani Sai Surya Teja Jamala Madaka. So, so please bear with the name Mani and Teja is fine. So we have so many workshops. Uh, we have three sets of workshops. There, is, there are 10 wet lab workshops, a Bento lab by Bethan, Amino lab by Julie and Justin, and then Grow Fungus by Allison, Transformation by William, Plasmid Mapping by Scott, and then Gene Editing, by Chris, uh, gene editing with CRISPR by Ellen, Plant Tissue Culture by Sebastian. I just want to mention their names because they were super patient with me. I was sending so many emails. They were really patient, they replied me. Uh, and then Hydrogels Duo by Jaden and Neves, and Self Resynthetic Bio by Jenny, and Bio Builder by Natalie. And then we have some fantastic hands on hardware workshops. There is a mini microscope workshop, and then Open Trons, Bikezels, Open Drop, Microfluidics, DIY Refrigerator, and Robo Biohacker. Uh, so we're excited to host all of these. Uh, this is going to happen in the nucleus room just beside in the sixth floor. And the wet lab workshops would, as David said, they would happen right across the street. And then we have some eccentric workshops. There is the Indian medicine, traditional medicine, Ayurvedic chempunks. And then there is a cheese making workshop. Uh, and then there are three demonstrations, BioNet, DIY Biosafety, and Arduino. Uh, I thank all the instructors. As I said, they're super patient. Uh, they were replying all my emails. And let me know if you have any questions regarding the workshops. I'm the one you should contact. Thank you. Thank you, Mani.
Okay, so this is the lab across the street, it's Building 68. Shout outs to the biology department. Um, it's a longer other story, but uh, really, really appreciate them for opening up their teaching laboratory for us. So over the weekend in particular, the doors are gonna be locked, okay? So the only people that have access are the people with the green lanyards. Those are the co-instructors of each of these workshops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna announce on stage when the workshops are leaving, find your instructor, they're gonna walk you across the street. If you get locked out, something weird happens, contact Tasia, okay? His contact information is also in the workshop schedule, which is now linked from the, uh, the uh, main webpage. Okay, so if you need Teja, this is inf information. He can let you into the wet lab. Um, so thank you, Teja. Okay, other couple of quick final points. Um, there's yoga tomorrow morning and also on Sunday morning. So 7.45 tomorrow and I think 8.45 on Sunday. Portia Brockaway is gonna be doing that. Um, so thank you. And Misha, if you're anywhere in the room, thank you for acquiring all of MIT's yoga mats. She like went on an expedition. I don't even know how she did it, but she acquired, yeah. Shout outs to Misha, wherever she is. Round of applause to Misha, thank you. Okay, um, tonight, okay, we have a tour of Ginkgo Bioworks uh, that's gonna happen tonight. One quick note, all right, um, Ginkgo was, back when we started doing this, I thought there were gonna be like 50 of you, so Ginkgo was like, hey, great, 50 people, no problem. And then like, like you know, whatever, a couple weeks ago, I was like, hey, you know, so I know I said 50, but can we do 200? And they were, it was just like, you know, Kit from Ginkgo is just kind of like, hey, okay, and she's so sweet and so nice and was just like trying her nicest to be like, no, you really can't do 200. So, uh, so ultimately we, we compromised and you know, again, they're super nice to let us have anybody at all. So we're doing 100, okay? So, um, so where's, where's Todd Kukin? Okay, so Todd is gonna be our um, Ginkgo leader tonight, okay? And I'm just gonna, we're gonna pass this out later, but because only 100 of you get to go, my first rule is if you guys are from the Boston area or the Northeast, you don't get to go on this tour, sorry. We're gonna organize a follow-up one for you guys. You're here, we can figure it out. Ginkgo's family, we'll figure it out. Um, but this is really for people that have traveled very, very far away, okay? So um, just keep that in mind. And we only have slots for 100, but those that do not make it, I don't know if Tim Savas is in the room, we have something just as awesome here. So um, downstairs on the fifth floor, there are these amazing food computers, okay? So Open Agriculture, they have an initiative here as well. And they've got these servers of these food computers, and you're gonna get a whole hands-on demo of that. So if you can't go to Ginkgo, you're gonna see something just as awesome. Okay, so just a heads up, and we'll go through this process later on tonight. Okay, final point here. Um, so, okay, FOMO, right, fear of missing out. Uh, just to say, because this has already been happening, people, you know, Dan Hernandez wants to run this algorithm to optimize the unconference so everybody can see the thing that they're, you're not gonna be able to see all the things you wanna see. You're gonna be doing a hands-on workshop, and be like, oh my God, I'm missing George Church say something, or whatever, it's just, just live with it. Just, you're just gonna have to adopt your zen, like, surrender mode, and just be like, I can't see anything, okay? Also, the talks today, I'm already over time, right? We're gonna, we're gonna miss things. Like, if stuff doesn't get addressed enough to your satisfaction, put an unconference on the board and dive in deeper Sunday, okay? So there's plenty of opportunity Sunday and Saturday for more unconference. And then Monday, if you're here on Monday too, I'm booking a bunch of conference rooms around the lab, so if you're here, we'll talk more, okay? So there's plenty of time. And the final point here, the point is not to do everything this weekend. The point here is to plant like beautiful seeds that are gonna bloom into awesome, uh, you, know, uh, you know, beautiful uh, planet invigorating forests, okay? So, so basically, you know, we're gonna plant seeds and all kinds of ideas and projects this weekend. And um, so be satisfied with that. And I, I know for me, that is gonna be a, you know, a huge win if we can really, really, um, from this weekend, uh, lead to some big global collaborations and projects, which I, I really feel like we will. So uh, before I invite Joey up, there's a couple of really important people to thank. Um, so uh, all of our sponsors, I've never organized an event like this before, and so um, I really didn't appreciate like how important sponsors are for making an event like this happen. But just so you all get a, a sense, we administered almost 100 travel awards to get all of you flown here. Uh, we had uh, like 100 people staying in different Airbnbs and hosts and all of that, and none of that could have happened without um, this, the, the um, generous support of all these different sponsors. So I really, really wanna thank each one. Um, Takeda, I'm gonna thank a little bit more later because Magda is not here, but Magda and Takeda are really, really incredible. Thank you so much to them. Um, Digital Garage is in the house, so I had the great chance of meeting Sammy and Teruya, who are, I think are sitting over here. Um, and DG, uh, thank you guys so much for supporting this event and also supporting the, uh, the community bio movement in Japan. And again, I think all of these companies, you know, when you're trying to pitch like an event like this, I think it takes a real co companies that have actually a real vision to imagine like what the future of bio is going to be to support a movement. So um, thank you so much, DG, for your support. Um, 
Innovation Endeavors is the next one. I don't know if Drawer's in the house, but this is Drawer Berman. Um, he's the co-founder of Innovation Endeavors along with Eric Schmidt from Google. And again, um, just, you know, they're also developing a whole bio vertical and are really, really excited about this idea of garage bio and the innovation that's possible there. So Drawer, thank you so much. Um, and to Vertex, I hope Katie and Melody are in the room someplace, but thank you guys so much for your support. And then BioBricks, after iGem, I know, uh, you know, Linda's here and Kim Demore is here. And again, we're all gonna see bio, uh, Ginkgo BioWorks tonight, so um, thank you guys all so, so much. Um, and finally, you know, this whole crew uh, at the Media Lab here is, uh, these are uh, folks that are part of my group. I wanna shout out a few key people because, you know, again, this event would not be possible without them. Nina Wang, is Nina here? Um, Nina, can you, so everybody just give a big round of applause for Nina, please. That's Nina coming in right now. So, Nina, Nina, Built the whole website. Um, she emailed, I think, every single one of you all, made the whole travel directory, just spent tireless hours on top of classes and everything else to make this all happen. So, Nina, thank you so, so much for all of your hard work. Um, you know, I really, really want to give a super, super special shout out from the bottom of my heart to Nicole Bakker. Where's Nicole? Um, everybody give a huge round of applause to Nicole. So, everything that you see designed like the logo, um, every poster, every kind of design thing, including the entire interior design. Have you guys seen the lysosome? Like, it's so nice. Like, this, all of this design, the giant vinyl wall, everything, all of that was Nicole. She handled all of the food and just did everything so expertly and professionally and was so reliable and just worked her ass off. I mean, she just did work so, so hard for this event. So, Nicole, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And just let's one more round of applause for Nicole because she just did such an unbelievable job. Thank you, Nicole. Okay, and then, all right, this is ramen being made, but it's not being made by just any person. It's being made by Mary Magic, okay? So, uh, Mary, this is, I'm sorry, Mary. This is my thing. I put embarrassing pictures of people up in public. So, um, this is Mary making ramen during this, like, super late night, like, Skype meeting that we were having about Biosummit. Um, this is uh, Mary after graduating from the Media Lab. Probably a better picture for Mary's in the public consumption. But um, Mary, I think, is really the heart and soul of this whole biohacking movement. Um, you know, as we're organizing this event, you know, Mary would always be like, you know, David, we really need to make sure that it's global. We need to make sure that underrepresented people are here. You know, I'm being pulled in all these different directions, but Mary would, was always had the conscience. She would always be like pulling me where the heart needed to be. So, uh, Mary, thank you for being the heart and soul of this event. So, thanks to Mary. Yes, Mary Magic. Okay, this is Mar this is Marie. Where's Marie? Uh, so, everybody, can you please all give a big round of applause for Marie? Okay. So. Uh, Marie basically worked to house all of you, okay? You're the, the Airbnbs, the local hosting. I want to change from this house. Oh, I'm getting in this time. Can I swap? Oh, no. That was all Marie, handling every single one of those logistics, dealing with all of your concerns and everything. So, Marie, thank you so, so much for all of your hard work. One more round of applause for Marie's, please. Thank you. And standing next to Marie is Meng. So this is Meng. Meng, raise your hand, dude. Meng, uh, Meng just like emerged. I don't even know. Meng just like emerged from heaven and came down and just helped us to do everything. He was the last person to leave here last night with us. Uh, round of applause for Meng for all of his hard work. Thank you. Um, this is not meant to just shout out Jake Wintermute. I apologize uh, about that. This is, I, I apologize, guys. This is just like the only crappy like screenshot I had of like the meetings. So every single week for months now, this whole crew of global folks, uh, you know, Maria, Dan, Patrick, Adeline, Angela, Dan, Jake, Jason, Todd, Karen, Kenza, Kevin, Megan, Scott, Dan, and more, we chime in every single week to think about this event. How do we make it more effective? How do we make it more awesome? So thank you all so much. So round of applause to you guys for all of your hard work. Um, and lastly, okay, so this is my sister who, like, I was just like, hey, JJ, like, I'm organizing this crazy event. Can you, like, fly here for a week and just, like, help every day for, like, 18 hours a day? Is that cool? So my sister, like, came and did it. And she, like, went to Costco and bought cheese and, like, drove people to the airport, to farms, and made slides and did, like, every possible thing. So uh, thank you so much to my sister, Shing. Um, it's a family affair. This is my family in... Uh, in, uh, at Burning Man, we, we all take family vacation. And this is her art project, by the way. She made a giant gramophone in the desert, so that was cool. Um, and then the final person that I want to thank is our, our speaker for today. Okay, so this is Joey Ito. Okay, so um, Joey, um, 
I, I don't even know what to say, man. Thank you so much for all of your support um, for this event and just in general for this movement. I think you've really um, um, just gone above and beyond with everything. And this is a photo that I took of Joey uh, when he, this is his biohacking initiation actually right here. This is like the moment where Joey first became a biohacker. We were trying, and this is a little just anecdote. We were trying to do this at MIT, but we couldn't find a space at MIT because no research lab, I mean, it's Joey Ito, he's the director of the Media Lab, but still it's like, you know, are we gonna let Joey, who doesn't really know how to pipette, into like an advanced tissue engineering lab, you know? And so MIT doesn't really have like a great community lab yet. And again, I know Steve Wasserman and other folks are here and we're gonna change that. But, um, you know, so we ended up doing this stuff in Joey's kitchen, okay? Like many of you who do work at home. So, um, so Joey is a biohacker, has been a really, really amazing uh, friend and ally through this whole process. So uh, please welcome to the stage Joey Ito for some opening remarks and words. Thanks, David. Um, so David wanted me to, first of all, David calls this a movement, but I wanted to know, how many of you think that you're part of a movement already? Uh, can, can I like, like so, so? Um, so? So how many don't think this is really a movement, or yet? Uh, so, so, okay, so, it's, it's, so, so, so there, there's some movementness happening, right? So, um, so, Let's see if we get my slides up. Uh, one sec, okay. Um, but uh, I've been at the, I know you've had a bunch of uh, meetings, so I don't want to overemphasize this particular meeting, but I've been at sort of the birthing of different uh, movements and different organizations. And I think one of the questions that I have is, is this, are you guys going to be uh, turning into more of a movement? Uh, is this a continuation of movement? And I'm curious to sort of understand exactly what that is. And when my slides come up, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Let's see. All right. Um, there we go. Oh, wrong slide. Okay, I'll just take it to the beginning. There's my whole presentation. Okay, um, so, 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 so the question is, are we a movement yet? And, and I think sometimes you can't really tell, um, but sometimes you definitely can tell. Um, th this, was, this is, my, this is sort of my, my boast slide, but this is uh, my bathroom in the early 90s, and it's the first commercial internet service provider in Japan. And I think this is sort of important in, a, in several ways, because there's a bunch of totally uneducated kids, except for one kid who actually had a, um, who was from the Media Lab, but, um, but we put together a bunch of junk parts for 1500 bucks and set up an internet service provider. And this is sort of the first of the layers of um, what I call permissionless innovation. It was, in the old days, you had to be a telephone company, but a bunch of kids with a bunch of junk parts could put together a point of presence. And that created uh, this I idea of being able to hack without asking permission and, the, uh, and created an infrastructure for other movements. Um, there's a great book um, called Regional Advantage um, that Annalise Saxenian wrote. And this is not just about the internet. This is sort of about personal computers and other things. But it's about how Boston loses its dominion over computing to Silicon Valley. Because what happens is the cost of innovation goes down, and the internet sort of pushes this. And it, you don't need the power, the privilege, the money, the institutions to innovate. You just need, uh, you need a lot less. And so what happens is the, the, the the innovation moves to Silicon Valley where the kids are running around and they're being funded by venture capitalists. It's, a, it's an important story because this, somehow with bio right now, we still have some of, uh, some of the action left here, but for, for computation and internet, even though a lot of it started here, we lost it. Um, there are a lot of uh, uh, movements that were started and empowered because of the internet. I know uh, Richard Stallman would hate if I said that uh, he exists because of the internet, but I would definitely say that um, free software was really, uh, uh, became much more of a, a, a substantial movement because of the internet. Uh, Linux, obviously, I, I used to run Creative Commons, which was another layer. But the, the, the thing about these, they all kind of had a purpose, right? You were like, we believe in free software, we've written licenses, we're, um, you know, at Creative Commons, we've created all these, this architecture and we were trying to promote it. Um, we were kind of um, imperialistic because we were trying to stomp out um, other forms of uh, uh, sharing because uh, we felt like the internet 
we didn't, that you shouldn't have 10 different TCP IPs, that interoperability uh, was a key part in getting, you know, getting consensus from 70 different countries on what the right license would, would, would be and propagating it became our mission. And so a lot of movements have a mission, a lot of movements uh, create a, a layer of infrastructure for other people to do things on. So that's sort of one category of movement. And so I kind of have a question, is, is there something like that in the biohacking community that um, you might be already working on or thinking about? Um, and, and, and a key thing is the summits that we had were all, all, always really, really important. So I think this could be one of them. Um, if you look at the internet, you know, we had different uh, nonprofit T organizations that feel a little bit like MIT, like Xerox PARC is where Ethernet was created in 74. DARPA was the funding for TCP IP. Um, Tim Berners-Lee at CERN created um, HTTP and HTML, the web. And then you created these non-governmental bodies like the Internet Engineering Task Force or ICANN or the W3C to manage those protocols. So, but when you look at how, why these layers were chunked this way, my argument is that these are actually communities of expertise. So when you went to ICANN meetings, there's a whole bunch of bullshit and the corporate stuff, but actually the core of ICANN were a bunch of nonprofit people that understood how routing worked and that knew how to make sure the thing kept running. I remember when ITU tried to take over the internet, they came and said, well, we should just do IP addresses like we do zip codes and allocate them by country. And everybody was like, no, there's, you just don't understand how this works. And so the key for all these communities was that everyone who knew anything about any of this stuff hung out there. And so these, these coordinating bodies actually um, derive their power from uh, the, the, the nonprofit folks. And even today, you, the internet wouldn't be running if it weren't for a whole bunch of people who do it just because they love the net. Um, but, but is there a parallel? Is, does, is there some sort of uh, coordinating function that you guys can do? Um, policy, technology, I don't know, that's a question. Um, it's not just for bits. Um, this is the open hardware mark. And so just like we were having a movement uh, of sharing with with uh, software, uh, we're doing it with hardware. Um, and then you have you know, innovators in places like Shenzhen where they probably don't really care about the legal part of open hardware, but they're innovating like crazy. And so what's happening, and the key thing I think that happened with the internet is that the internet caused communications to be so competitive that the cost went to nearly zero. So it made collaboration and distribution nearly zero. And that allowed the innovation cost to go down and also allowed people to communicate and create communities. And that's, that's also part of what's happening with the hardware movement is that the, the, the network is allowing people to collaborate. This is Lamar Freed who used to be here. Uh, she runs a company called Adafruit in New York. It's a, it's a super successful company. They've never taken outside funding. She designs all of her own stuff. This is her favorite gadget, a Samsung pick and place machine. Um, and so she designs and produces and ships everything from her place in New York. And so it's you don't need to be a consumer electronics big mammoth anymore. You can be a, 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 a hacker in New York and you can design and ship your own hardware products. So, so what happened, pushing innovation to the edges and to the street happened, is happening in hardware just like it happened in software. And my argument is that it's happening already, obviously. You don't, I need, don't need to argue with you. It's happening in bio. So you, know, you used to spend things, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in years and years to create synth bio like Serona, which is the uh, DuPont uh, uh, a polyester-like uh, uh, material. But this is kind of, to me, like the mainframe of, of, of um, Synbio. So this is what sort of happens in big companies. But as uh, David said, this was my first ex uh, experiment. Uh, this was using uh, the Genomicon uh, uh, violation kit. And it was my first chance to try to do this. And re I realized as I was playing around, this feels a lot like when we were building the internet. I mean, suddenly, uh, you know, instead of working with big telcos, we could be the telco and, and we could actually um, fiddle around and, and try to um, do things that might normally be pharma companies. And I, I know you guys don't call yourself street bio, but um, uh, I know David does. And I, I like the idea of street bio, but, but, I, but I think the question is, you know, at, is innovation being pushed to the edges like it did with software, like uh, it, did with content like it did, uh, is happening with hardware. And what does that mean? Is, and is innovation the key point or is it uh, saving the world? Is it about health? Is it, you know, maybe it's about everything, but sort of that's kind of a question that I have. Is it a cultural thing? 
Um, and I, I, I'm sure a lot of you have worked with hackerspaces. Many of you may actually be in hackerspaces. But to me, I, I love the hackerspaces model because they're kind of like pirates. They, there's no hierarchy, and they don't really listen to each other. But they have a website where you go where they have all the patterns that they share. So there's like the bike shed pattern where if you're trying to paint a bike shed, everybody has an opinion about what color it should be, and you fight forever about the color of the bike shed, but you're building a nuclear reactor. No one understands and no one argues. So in a room, whenever everybody starts to argue about something that's irrelevant, Relevant, but everybody has an opinion on, you say bike shed pattern, and then you move on. And so what they do, instead of trying to come up with some code that they all follow, they share patterns with each other. So that may be one, uh, a less formal way, but they, they, because of the internet, are able to convene. Um, this is Larry Lessig, and he, in his book, Code, he describes how technologies and science move forward with these four quadrants. So laws change, norms change, there's markets, and architecture would be sort of the architecture of the technology. And all four of these kind of have to move together in concert in order for things to move forward. So regulations can hold you back, public opinion and norms can hold you back, uh, the market can change, the technology can change, but somehow you need to get all four of these together. So that's another way of thinking about movements is, um, uh, do we have all four of these sort of working on our side? Do we have representatives of all four of these in the room? But somehow, and the question I guess I have for you and David as you move forward is, how are you going to measure success, right? Because I think it's great that we all showed up and we're all happy and it's gonna be awesome, that's, that's fine. But as sort of the director of the lab, it was like, well, is this five years from now, 10 years from now, has this been successful? That's sort of a question that I have. One way you can measure is, is your logo on people's heads? Are people tattooing your logo? Do you even have a logo? Are they tattooing it on your foot? Um, you know, has the average shirt size increased in the last 10 years, right? <laughs> um, that could be a measure of success, um, or, 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 or not. Uh, this is one of my favorite slides. I always try to use it whenever I can. Um, but but I, think, I think it's actually an ecosystem. So I, I think that there's a kind of flourishing that happens when you have an active community and you know, if you're sort of looking at the Star Wars community or system as a flourishing system, you, you have the Ewok view, you have the Darth Vader view, you have the, the, the rebel view. And so whether you're the FBI or whether you're the anti-FBI, somehow this system is working for you and that the system it has a lot of energy, a lot of life, and has the ability to be a self-adaptive complex system, which I think good biological systems are. So I don't think it needs to be sort of crystalline and organized. And I think that uh, the Media Lab is really also trying to figure out how do you bring diversity in and not turn out chaos? How do you turn the diversity into something that feels like flourishing for everybody that's participating? So hopefully uh, that will uh, already be here, but will even become more robust as you guys go forward. Thank you. Joey, before you go, before you go, oh, no, no, you stay here for a second. Okay, so, so another thing that's happening this weekend, okay, Joey, you have to stay here, actually. Sorry, this is important. Yeah, it's a selfie, st I know, it's super sketchy. Okay, so, okay, the other funny thing that's happening is this weekend we're taking over the Media Lab Instagram account, so we're gonna be at Media Lab for the weekend, and so the way that I was instructed that we should take over is to do like a first photograph to start the kickoff, and then another person that you're gonna all wanna become friends with is Nicole, so Nicole is gonna be at Media Lab, okay, so if you want, if you're doing a cool project, hacking a cool thing, and you want to be on at Media Lab, Nicole's gonna be the one that's taking the things, okay? So, what we're gonna do first, though, is we're gonna do a selfie with Joey and with everybody here, okay? So hold on for one second. I'm gonna try to make this work. Shut up, really? How's that possible? Really? Okay, all right, this just worked a second ago. So, all right, guys. Okay, here we go. Oh, shit. <laughs> This. Okay. All right. I think this is gonna work. Okay. There you go. Okay. Okay. So let me just test it once. Okay. That's a good picture. Okay. So I have to. Maybe joke. You can actually come like closer here. Okay. All right, guys. You ready? One, two, three. Make some noise. Okay. Awesome. One more round for Joe Ito, everybody. It's already chaos, it's already chaos. Okay, so um, up next, this is the next chaos moment, okay? We're gonna do Hello World. All right, so this, 
session, this moment, was inspired by the 2012 meeting that we had at the FBI, which I was really, I mean, actually it was a really amazing moment. And I, it was so cool seeing all of the different community labs come up and present. You know, it was a little strange, though, because it was like, you know, a guy in a dark suit being like, up next, we have from Indonesia, a life patch. And it'd be like, okay, you know. Um, so, so we're going to try something a little different. It's an experiment. So all of you um, who are participating today put a slide into this deck, okay, this Google Drive deck, which is about to get advanced, okay? And uh, what did I do with the advancer? All right. So it's going to be one minute. And so I think Biotown, you guys are first. So what we're going to do is you guys all know the approximate order like you're in. So just come over on this side. And what we're going to do is you're going to come on the stage here. You're going to talk for one minute. The slides are just going to go automatically in a minute. So it'll change. And if you're mid-sentence, it's OK. Just move on, and the next person will get up, OK? So it's going to be a big experiment, and we're going to try it out. Um, where's Biotown? You guys should come up like right here, right now. Biotown. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Come, come, come. And you guys know who's after Biotown, so just you guys can start kind of getting ready to do this, OK? And then we're going to go one minute, explain your lab, and it's going to be magic. Biotown, are you guys ready to start? OK. Here we go. So hello, world. Uh, I just want to start off by thanking uh, David and uh, Joito for the opening remarks. Thank you very much for organizing this conference. Uh, so we are Biotown, so we are uh, Ottawa's iteration of the biohacker space. We are a newcomer to the space, so we've only been formed uh, last year, but we're uh, very eager to contribute to this uh, uh, beautiful uh, experience. Uh, so my name's, uh, I should start off with that, my name's Carl Ferra, I'm president and uh, co-founder of uh, Biotown, and I have with me... Uh, I'm V. Paul, also one of the co-founders of Biotown. And uh, we're here to... Uh, learn and uh, share our experiences with you guys, and we're really hopeful that we can bring some, back some of the stuff that's uh, worked for you back to our city. Uh, so we, uh, as you can see up there, we have a little uh, closet-sized makerspace. We've been doing the most with what we can find. Um, we've put some stuff together, as you can see, a little makeshift EEG showing people what's inside their heads. So we actually, yes, this is really good timing for us. We actually just launched our crowdfunding campaign yesterday. And so this is to kick off our lab and actually gather the community around this uh, project we're doing. So we want to shorten the time that the city takes to uh, measure the quality of the water in the, in the beaches around our city. So if you guys think this is a great um, opportunity, we would love for you guys to back us. So feel free to just go on Indiegogo. And if you guys have... Uh, would like for you guys to back us. Uh, we're, so it's Bowtown on Indiegogo. A little shameless plug here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Bowtown. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So my name is Martin Meldeborg. I'm from Copenhagen. I co founded the Biohacker Space Biologie Guys a long time ago, but that's not what I want to talk about. So currently, I'm engaged in these two projects. So my day job is at, at the Fab Lab at Roskilde University. We're setting up a biofab lab. So basically, the Fab Lab has been really well functioning at integrated with the university students projects supporting their work. And now we're supporting them as well, being able to prototype in biological medium, uh, greenhouse, a lot of other stuff there, aquaponics. And also, I'm um, setting up a co-working laboratory. So it's more kind of a more professional uh, laboratory, it's co-located with Biologie Garage, and so the biohacker space, so you can kind of join in the community more association-like, and you can kind of graduate into kind of a more larger biospace. And we have all the kind of various, both universities support and kind of other biotech groups supporting that initiative. So that's uh, quite exciting and coming up. Um, yeah. Hey, I'm Andreas Stürmer. I'm from Austria. And it's a country where you can get uh, five years in prison for putting GFP in a safe lab strain of bacteria. And so I was very lucky to have found uh, the Ars Electronica Museum, where I did a glowing plant, the GFP plant, as you can see. And they allowed me to do independent research as long as I pay and as long as I make sure it's legal. And I'm also very happy to have American friends who helped me with uh, outsourcing projects. I would pay the synthesis. They would do the experiment in, in the US where it's legal. And I guess that's everything.
Hello, everybody. My name is Nieves Kubo. I started as industrial engineer. And when I was in my third year of the, of the degree, I started with 3D printing. And this changed all my way because I started to work in communities with people to develop low-cost uh, machines, uh, something that is affordable for everybody. And this way, I create my own uh, bioprinter with my dad at home. And then uh, some months ago, I discovered there was a, a community working for bio also. So thank you all for inviting me here. And to, um, I would like to talk to you about this community that I'm uh, trying to start around bioprinting, because the researchers in this field doesn't like to share a lot. So I, I would like to change this um, uh, with your collaboration. Make it, maybe this will be happening. OK, so that's all. Hi, I'm Günther. I'm from Vienna. Uh, together with Niki Passat, I founded the Pavilion 35 BioR Club in 2012. Today, I want to introduce uh, one of our recent projects. It's uh, Return to Dillmoon. Uh, I did it together um, <coughs> in, uh, uh, with the DIY Bio Europe uh, community. I was able to do it. Uh, please, uh, Federico and Roland, can you stand up a second? So they were the collaborators of this project. Hey, so uh, what we did, uh, we uh, translated a digital image into DNA. So uh, software uh, translates the image into a text file with A, G, T, and C. You can uh, send it in, they synthesize it for you, and you have the digital image as a molecule. So the order of the molecules refer to the order of the pixel and the colors. And then um, you can introduce it to any biological process you want. So what we did here, we did an image manipulation with CRISPR-Cas9. So the first image was the original template. We translated the image in the middle. That's where we wanted to go. Uh, and the actual result was the third image you can see here. So we cut out the piece in the middle and want to put in the eyes. And it worked, but it also <coughs> put in some indel mutations. And maybe there are some sequencing errors in that too. So that's about it. Thank you very much. Hi guys, we're um, Sound Bio Lab from Seattle U District. Um, we just launched in March this year, and on the left here um, is a map of Seattle that we created with glowing bacteria. And um, we reach out to a lot of um, schools and conventions um, to get the word out of our, uh, about our lab, and we reach out to a lot of homeschool communities. We also do a lot of workshop at our lab. So in part of our reach out, we uh, use an open source uh, camera magnifier, microscope, um, and we sell them for $5. Uh, we also do a, we have a community, a couple community projects, Citizen Salmon, which is studying the genetics of salmon. I'm giving a talk about that tomorrow. Um, also hoping to build up our art and science practice. So if there are artists in the area who have more experience with that, please let us know what insights you might have with working with spaces. Yeah, so uh, once the next slide pops up, we'll show you an example. Yeah, so we made this. We were at the Seattle Mini Maker Fair last weekend, so an example of some bio art we've been doing at our space. Uh, we made this massive Petri dish that's about 20 inches by 24 inches, made out of acrylic. Uh, kind of just painted our logo on it and some other stuff. That sounds really good fun. Uh, so one thing that we're uh, hoping to get out of this weekend is that uh, kind of connect with more community labs and other people that are biohackers around the world that are trying to start community labs in their cities and that they haven't done it yet. Uh, like I've been helping organize a lot of these quarterly calls among community labs around the world. Uh, and they've been going really well. We've had two or three of them so far, and we have another one in about a month or so. So feel free to email us at info at sound.bio. And there's been a bunch of labs. I think there's a ton of people here that I've seen. I actually got to meet for the first time last night uh, in person because we've been chatting online and kind of collaborating and trying to figure out ways to better run the spaces around the world. So I hope to get more spaces in loop on that so we can actually start uh, increasing collaboration between these labs and hopefully do some really fun stuff. Thank you, guys. Hi, my name is Ananda. Um, I'm a cook, industrial designer, and bio enthusiast. Um, I mostly do um, bio stuff from the art and policy side. Um, at the restaurant where I work, we have a yeast lab for the brewery, and I'm currently learning how to maintain our yeast libraries and how to detect tank infections. Um, I've spent a lot of time in my undergrad creating bio-inspired pieces that are based on speculative design 
using things like fish stomachs and dried seafood as building materials, and volunteering at local uh, DIY bio and arts science spaces, so uh, eyeball dissecting. Um, I'm currently policy and practices advisor for iGEM Toronto. I organize an event called Iconathon, which is an event where participants collaborate to create icons for scientific communication. So there's one for quorum sensing at the top, which is really cool. Um, and I'm education lead for the Toronto Youth Food Policy Council, where I co-produce a peer review journal and an arts journal. Um, and my job with the council is to go into national food policy consultations where I advocate for scientific literacy initiatives alongside nutritional literacy programs. And I really like eating military meal rations. Um, <laughs> this hobby has led me to inquire uh, more about the history of processed food, supply chains, farming, and actually the possible intersections of industrial agriculture and permaculture and in, uh, using synthetic biology as a lens and tool. I hope to start uh, learning how to farm in 2018. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is Pat. I'm from the Freak Lab. And as you might see, I'm a freaky people. Um, so Freak Lab stands for Futuristic Research in Enigmatic and Aesthetic Knowledge. And we do pretty much everything that's futuristic. And of course, it's include biology. And you know, our project include like wearable technology that respond to hormone or brain control 3D printer. Or you know, we just recently um, have a proposal on putting 3D printer to print food for astronaut in space. So um, you know, if you are freak and futuristic, just contact us. We welcome everyone. Oh, and we are based in Thailand. Thank you very much. <laughs> Kia ora, Tato. It's wonderful to be here. I'm Alison Stringer from Wellington NZ. Come talk to me about these things. These are my details. I'm really looking forward to having amazing conversations with fantastic people, and I already have been, about science, art, and what the future looks like in tech. I'm also really looking forward to having some of the more difficult and challenging conversations about inclusion, funding, biosafety, documentation, <laughs> infrastructure, and others. So yeah, David, let's change the world. And let's also build the future we want to see. Thank you. Hi. Thank um, that's me, I'm Jan Maarten Luursema. I do my biohacking at De Waag in uh, Amsterdam. The uh, list of keywords kind of is my career in chronological order of sorts. And beneath that, is I'm really interested in uh, 3D printing, work a lot with that. Uh, Microecology is something I really, really like. You know, it's like everybody knows it's just about 2% of microorganisms uh, that we can culture. So what are the rest doing? And I'm trying to build some technology, some examples here, to actually do some experimental research to learn about these intricacies, about these networks, these organisms, maybe meta-organisms even. And there's some other keywords of stuff that I like to talk about, but it's not an uh, exhaustive list. Uh, really happy to be here to, uh, to share, to learn, and to uh, interact with you all. Thank you. Hi, oh, I made it. My name is Sophie, I'm from Mexico, and I founded a biohacking community named Jean Garage. It's in Mexico City, actually, and I don't have a, a, like a real space yet, but I, what I want to do this weekend is to talk to you, and I could use some advice uh, of how to get the, the funding, the money of the, to get the equipment, because um, I don't have a space, and that's why all my stuff is in my house. And my fiance almost killed me a few times for that, because there are not so many things, but uh, it's enough to make a mess in the closet. So thank you. Nice to meet you. What's up, BioFam? Um, I'm Elliot. Nice to meet all you guys. Uh, I really do feel like you guys are family. It's cool seeing a lot of faces that i just been talking to online. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Indie Lab. We are one of five biohacker spaces in Virginia. So I'm here representing also the Virginia Coalition of Community Labs. Uh, we practice interdisciplinary science at Indie Lab. That means it was started by a physicist, a chemist, and a biologist. Uh, so what we do is look at the weird intercollaborations in all of the fields of science. So what we 
we do is we have uh, members apply with a specific project in mind, but if you're a member of the lab, you have to teach workshops. Every single person in the lab teaches workshops. So these are some of the things that we've done, uh, the companies we launched and other things like that. Um, my company grows algae, uh, so I'm a huge algae nerd, and I'm all about decentralized nutrient production, so come talk to me about that. Uh, I will be leading an unconference uh, with Matthew over there and a number of other people on how to actually make money from this thing that we all do. So uh, thank you so much, and I hope to see you. Whoa, it's a great pleasure to be here. Hello, everyone. My name is Francisco Mosquera. I am from Ecuador. I study biotechnology engineer, and currently I am the leader of, of my university Synthetic Biology Group, and by 2018, we will be taking part in aging for first time in Ecuador. Um, in addition, I am a co-founder of Planceta, and currently we are doing experiments in order to do or to make disposable plates using mushroom mycelia, as you can see there. And that's about me. Thanks. Hi, everyone. It's awesome being here. Um, so I'm Scott Pownall. I'm from Open Science Network in Vancouver, Canada. Let me take your picture. Oh, thank you. Oh, awesome. Um, and uh, we started just over two years ago. Uh, Eric Zeppa is someplace in the room. You want to give a shout out, Eric? Eric? Maybe he's not. <laughs> oh, there he is. Um, and so um, we do a lot of different things. Um, we're, we're young. We're struggling with our rent, the cost of living in Vancouver. And uh, we're, um, we do the STEM Mentoring Cafe. Um, the group here in the top left are the people that help form Open Science Network. Uh, so Eric, um, oh, it's got cut off. There's. Uh, uh, Ian at the top, Casey, Emily, um, Michael Yamashita started up DIY Bio Vancouver in 2010, um, and uh, from that we kind of co-opted their meetup group, and uh, uh, he's now on our board. Wes does our STEM mentoring outreach, so we go out to the schools and uh, have you know like 14 or 15 different uh, mentors that come and teach people about um, their um, areas um, of interest, and it's uh, pretty awesome. Um, and and yeah, we do projects. I teach a synthetic biology course uh, to members to just keep them interested. Uh, and we're also now part of the Bio Academy node. Um, so anyways, uh, I guess I got a second or two. Oh yeah, that uh, the tea thing up at the top. Uh, we do this um, tea and microscope evening. So um, uh, Luke Maloney is um, uh, part of Pandora um, in Vancouver and uh, he's uh, an expert in Chinese teas. And so we, we do these tastings of the teas and then we look at the, um, the uh, uh, fungi and whatnot that are growing in the tea uh, uh, under the microscope. Pretty cool. Next. Hello, hello everybody. I'm Yuan from France. I'm working for the magazine called Makery. It's a media for labs. It's, a, it's about DIY culture and general science from Acker, Maker, Fab Labs, um, biohacking, art science, bio art, etc. Um, I'm here because we're organizing an event in January about open hardware and healthcare and bio art. It's going to be about um, open uh, echography. We, in Makery, we do a lot of side projects, organizing workshops, conferences, artist residencies, including one is in um, a Hotel Dieu Hospital in Paris with, with a project called EcoPen, doing open hardware echography for, on smartphones. So we're going to have an event in January. It's called Open Source Body. It's, um, it would talk about access to healthcare through open hardware. I hope anyone who is interested will talk to me about it because I we would like to gather a lot of people around those things. Um, it's going to be about art too, with uh, bio art communities coming. So I think that's it. And if you want to talk to me about it, I will be pleased. Next. Nice to meet you all. Um, I'm Eleanor Powell. So I'm the director of the um, AI lab at the Wilson Center. 
And my interest lies in the democratization of genomics and artificial intelligence and how the convergence of these two technologies can help us better understand the inner functions of our genomes and how, you know, what biomechanism and what biomarkers are behind most, uh, most disease. So um, what I want to do is that I lead a project on citizens who innovate in health and we try to collect those genomics data and basically hack the internet of living things to benefit our health. So what do I mean by this? I mean, I imagine a future where, um, you know, everyone would be monitoring the DNA of their own bodies and other species on shared cloud labs. We could monitor our microbiomes. Uh, we could basically have liquid biopsies at home to kind of, you know, uh, know better about our vital biomarkers. So if you are interested in health, if you want to help empower citizens, patients who are trying to know better about their own genome, contact me uh, and I will be very happy to include you. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, I am Vincent. Uh, I'm from Belgium where uh, me and a couple of friends started this uh, open bio lab. It's open for everyone, a DIY bio lab. And uh, we, we, sh we got some pictures here to show you what we do there. Uh, that's a cornstarch party we had. There you have Winnie, one of the co-founders also, <laughs> who, um, who was uh, working with uh, um, insects. Uh, we also work with uh, fungi to make uh, biomaterials. We give workshops and uh, we also did uh, aquaponics. So, uh, and now after that, we also started a different uh, thing and that's uh, what Nick is gonna talk about. Hi everybody, what's up? Uh, so, uh, out of reagent, um, E. coli was born, it's written with a K because you wouldn't find us otherwise uh, on the internet. And uh, E. coli develops science activities for classrooms uh, and we have a particular focus on underprivileged groups. Uh, so, the picture in the left bottom corner uh, is a group of people who are mentally challenged who are uh, doing science. Uh, and we sort of uh, focus on experience-based learning and fascination. We develop them, we test them in schools, and then we teach teachers how to do it. And in all steps of that process, anyone can get involved. If you want to work with kids or with underprivileged groups or you just want to do science, then you're welcome. So, come speak to us about all this stuff. Thanks. Hello, my name is Daniel. I'm from Mexico City. Um, I'm here representing All Biotech, that is a non for profit organization based in Santiago, Chile. Uh, we are looking to foster and promote biotech development in Latin America. Uh, we're getting together 100 of the most promising leaders uh, of biotech in Latin. And also, I'm one of the luckiest guys on earth because I'm leading the construction of this amazing lab. Uh, this is in Mexico, but, uh, well, the problem is that I have this amazing lab, but I don't know what to do with it. So I'm looking here for inspiration and some good ideas. We're making some cool projects on digital agriculture and agrobiotechnology. Uh, but, well, I'm here to learn uh, about you. I'm looking forward to, to talk. Um, uh, well, also, this is my Facebook page. We, I, I have like 11k followers, so if you want to share something, please contact me. Um, hello everyone, I'm Maria from Hong Kong. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm very happy to be here because uh, when, when I first joined the DIY About community, I didn't thought, I haven't thought of, I can meet all of you guys from all around the world and learn from you. And at this stage, we are the only, uh, still the only one DIY bio lab in Hong Kong. And I can see from the uh, statistic that there are not many uh, DIY bio communities in uh, Southeast Asia. And I wish we will have more people joining this uh, community. And as f at the top left corner of the pictures is our community lab, community lab right now, we are uh, inside the Maker Space, Maker Bay, uh, in which I, is my day job to teach in, uh, to nurture young makers in the Maker Bay, and also I'm organizing a uh, community bio lab there. And and we, apart from uh, organizing a lab, we also have uh, public talks, so to educate people what is uh, biology and then what, because the people would think that 
some of the biotechnology is dangerous in Hong Kong. I don't know why, so we organized free talks, is talk, let's talk bio. And uh, we also have community night workshops. Uh, people love eating and drink, so we uh, teach them how to brew their own meats and also make cheese. And uh, we have a community project, which is the Bar Code Hong Kong, because we want to, want, um, we want to engage our citizens to gain a, their ownership in the in the motherland and also at the same time learning some about technology skills and my own interest is to uh, is, is environmental science so um, I'm seeking I'm seeking collaboration into uh, environmental science project thank you hello um my name is Jenny Malloy. I'm from Cambridge, UK. Um, I am a molecular biologist by training. I worked on genetic control of mosquito populations. Um, but I realised both before and after doing that research that um, it was way more expensive than it needed to be, um, beset by secrecy and a lack of openness. Um, and so I'm really interested in open source approaches to science. Um, I'm lucky enough now to coordinate the University of Cambridge's synthetic biology program um, and also um, co-organize a range of communities. It's great to see so many people here from the Gathering for Open Science hardware. So I'm basically all about um, enabling technologies and open access to enabling technologies in science and I do a range of projects around that including in my spare time setting up Biomake Space in Cambridge. We're just about to open. I've spent a lot of time with a living room full of freezers and a shed full of lab equipment and we're now on the cusp of um, actually getting our space operating so I'm really keen to learn from you all about the amazing stuff that we could do there. And I'm really interested in the question that Joey asked earlier about how do we know if all of this open stuff is succeeding. And so um, I'm convening a research group um, in Cambridge around innovation, openness and, and equity, as well as working on projects around how we actually share some legal tools, um, which you'll hear about later from Linda at the Biobricks Foundation, the Open MTA. Um, and yeah, and check out Open Plant. We are um, a, a large research consortium of 20 labs that are sharing tools for engineering um, plants as openly as possible. Um, with not only academia, but also all of you wonderful people in community biolabs. So that's me. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm Emmanuel Flores. I'm from Cancun, but I'm currently living in Merida, Yucatan. So we're starting a bio lab up in um, the Fab Lab, Yucatan. And we're um, um, having all, all these... Uh, like ideas for, for current projects, but my main focus here is like to connect with the global network of people um, because I think you're doing like really amazing, amazing projects. And um, so I, I, I would like to say that um, like my main interest now in, my, in like the first projects is about uh, bioremedi um, yeah, bioremediation of, of these like underground water networks that we have in the Yucatan Peninsula um, because of the meteorite that happened uh, in Chukchuluk. So these like pink waters are connected to the underground um, uh, water lakes that are, uh, uh, yeah, like called cenotes. So yeah, every, anyone that it's uh, um, uh, doing bioremediation or biosensors, I would be really interested in talking to you. Um, so thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Blossom Ware. Um, just really quick before I forget, I promised Andy Scarpelli in the Chicago area, I would give him a shout out. Um, he's starting a Chi Town Bio. I'm coming from the Chicago area and I'm in the far west suburbs. I'm afraid I'm indie. I don't belong to any um, club or something. Um, but I'm just super excited to be here. I hope to start a biohacking space um, in St. Charles. Illinois soon in conjunction with the makerspace there. And um, basically, so I'm, I'm a college biology professor, but like what gives me credentials to be here? That doesn't give me credentials here. Everybody knows that PhD doesn't give you credentials here, but I want to present my credentials, which is uh, my DNA tattoo. So, you, <laughs> so please, please accept my credentials.
Um, I just want to learn. I want to learn on pretty basic. I, I never even heard of biohacking until one of my students sent me a link to um, one of Josiah's uh, interviews. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never even, I didn't know there's a name for it. I have, you know, my PCR machine at my house. I'm making gel casting trays out of, uh, hot, with hot glue guns and um, uh, plastic cake trays. And, um, and it's working. So, um, Anyway, and I, and I love alternative music. It's so big a part of my life, so I'm including uh, B-52s that I saw this summer also on my slides, though, to get a big, full picture of who I am. Um, I'm just super excited to be here. I'm giddy excited to be here, and i um, just looking forward to all of your ideas and getting to know all of you, and uh, yeah, just so excited. So, um, <laughs> all right, that's it. I'll pass it on. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Keone Gandel. I'm very interested in open source biology. That's sort of what I do. Um, and I'm working for the 10K Gene Project, which if you people don't know, is a project by the BioBricks Foundation that we got 10 million base pairs of DNA synthesis to synthesize open source tools for the community and for academia and for an industry of just useful DNA. Um, so I'd love to hear your ideas of what would be the most useful to synthesize. And I also one day wish to build a synthetic genome at home. If you have any questions, comments, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm Angela Kazmarzik, and we are a BOSS Lab, Boston Open Science Laboratory. And we are a community lab based in Somerville. And thank you to everyone who visited us last night. It was really great to see all of you. <laughs> um, and we uh, started in 2016, and it was a group of six of us. And we started with just a few journal clubs and eventually started teaching classes. And then we held public forums and other activities in our space. And we also have members who work on projects. And this is Tim. He's our treasurer. Thanks for the introduction, Angela. So yeah, we have plenty of projects. We have about 10 working right now. Two are open source. One is on GitHub, it's called Open Yeast Engineering Project. It's super basic. If anyone can help me figure out how to engineer yeast and put it on GitHub, I'd really appreciate that. And um, we're gonna also be having another, the last open house was so incredible. I think we had max capacity and we couldn't fit anyone else in. Uh, so if you guys wanna join us again uh, Sunday after the conference, we're also gonna have an open house then too. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Heather Underwood uh, and I'm with Denver Biolabs. We started it in 2015 uh, and at first we just started as a meetup group. We did a lot of guest lectures, um, some workshops uh, because we didn't actually have a lab. Um, and then we did iGEM last year and this really was the forcing function for us to build out our lab. Um, but like a lot of you know, we didn't have a lot of money. That seems to be the theme. <laughs> um, and so we had the fortunate um, co-location with a makerspace, so we actually ended up building a lot of our own bio tools in our lab. Uh, and if you're interested in that, you should attend Isaac's workshop on Sunday. He's going to talk about how to do that. Uh, and now we're kind of entering our third phase, which is really exciting. We just got a new warehouse space in Denver. Uh, and so we're looking to build that out and kind of figure out membership structures <clears throat> and kind of cool collaboration projects. So we would love to hear from you because I think that um, projects bring our communities together, uh, unlike a lot of the other things that we do. And so we would really love to get um, in collaboration with other labs and kind of bring each other together. So if you're interested in that, you can catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at denverbiolabs.com. And I'm Heather at denverbiolabs.com. So feel free to reach out. Thanks so much. Hi. Hey world, um, I'm Isaac Bean, uh, also with Denver Biolabs. Um, really excited to be here with you guys. So uh, several years ago, fell in love with genetics and biology, but no formal background uh, like a lot of you guys. So I got online and uh, found a lot of you guys, and you guys kind of enabled me and inspired me to start self-teaching and, and learning how to do this stuff. So um, thank you guys so much for, for that. Um, for paving the way for me. And so what I've been doing, uh, I'm really passionate about democratization of technology and just opening up access to people around the world. 
so working on homologous recombination project uh, to kind of get a, a, some new ways of DNA assembly so we can get away from restriction enzymes, um, just lower cost, more accessible. Um, also, just building bio tools to make it more accessible. I recently built a, a low-cost gradient Wi-Fi enabled PCR. Um, I'm looking for beta testing lab, so please get in touch with me if you guys need a gradient PCR. Um, and yeah, please uh, feel free to come check out the Ar intro to Arduino workshop this Sunday, one to three, to learn more. So I'm honored to be here with all you guys. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I'm Sami from Tokyo, Japan. And Digital Garage is a company Joy, uh, founded in 1995. And one of our, our main business is investing in startup companies. We already invested in over 100 IT startups all over the world. And from this year, we started investing in biotechnology companies, biotechnology startups. But we realized especially in Tokyo, we need some space to increase number of biotechnology startups. Uh, to, uh, so the, st the space where everyone can use anytime they want. So we have a plan to open the first bio-incubation center in Tokyo in 2019. And in this summit, yeah, we want to, we would like to run many things from this summit, how to run lab and also find the partner who are interested in open lab in Tokyo. Hi, I'm Teruya Inomoto. I'm a postdoc at Tokyo Institute of Technology, and I help Digital Garage as an advisor. So I'm interested in how to establish non-academic laboratories, and how non-academic laboratories affect, can affect uh, life science, technology, and bio industry. That's why I attend this conference. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So good to see the family here. And I'll say from the outset, I am one of those strange ones that would prefer not to be photographed, videoed, or otherwise documented. Thank you. Um, because what I'm doing is actually, um, I, I've been on the scene since 2009. For those of you that don't me, know me, I'm JJ Hastings. I've had a home lab since 2009, no matter where I live in the world. Um, starting with uh, the laundry room, then the bathroom, and now finally my dining room and kitchen are completely taken over. And I'm now based in Australia, beautiful Australia. And I'm here to represent Bioquisitive, which was founded in February of 2015 with uh, my colleagues, Andrew Gray and Tony Bode. Um, I'm here to also represent ExoLab, which is a new startup group um, that is part of the BioFab Lab at St. Vincent Hospital, where I'm the principal investigator. Uh, we are working on different plant-based hydrogels. So on Sunday, if you'd like to come along to the lab, uh, I will show you how to make a chia-based hydrogel that you can both eat as well as use in tissue engineering. I also happen to be one of those strange people that has implants in their hand, as well as my whole genome sequenced. So I'm open to having you guys hack me. Um, just for future reference, I am developing my own cell lines out of my body. So I am making my body literally available to you for research. Please feel free to come and talk to me in the future. Thanks. Well, hello world. My name is Francisco Flores, and I'm representing IDEGEN from Ecuador. IDEGEN was established in 2015 and is open to any bi uh, biotechnology student that wants to have some uh, hands-on experience in the molecular biology lab. Only in Quito, the capital of Ecuador, there's around four universities that offer uh, biotechnology as a major, but the students hardly have an opportunity to get their hands in the lab. Um, with one of these universities, or a couple of them, we're working on a synthetic biology a project, so we're getting some experience in there too. Our lab survives by providing some uh, molecular uh, biology services to agricultural businesses, and we're hoping to get our own products out to the market very soon. I'm really happy to be here, uh, learn from you guys, and share our experience. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ellen Jorgensen. I'm sort of an old soul in this community. 
Uh, I helped found the first community biolab, and uh, for better or worse, my 2012 TED talk on biohacking is the entree into this area for a lot of people. Um, I am very excited about a new initiative that I've started called Biotech Without Borders. I'm trying to focus this time on uh, groups that are not represented in science. I think that uh, a lot of the people that um, get attracted to this area already kind of know something about it. I call them the Discovery Channel crowd sometimes. And I'd like to see more diverse faces, not just more diverse occupations, but more diverse ethnic groups, more women getting involved in this technology. And so we have a thousand square foot beautiful lab in Brooklyn. It's biosafety level now one. Uh, one now, we're going biosafety level two in about a month. Um, we've got a program right now for teachers called Hack the Helix. The first class of teachers is coming in this month where we're going to be supportive of teachers that want to teach molecular biology in underserved schools in Brooklyn. We also have high school interns. We have lab memberships. Uh, we've held our first couple of open nights that have been really great. Uh, we're sort of the new kid on the block. We just got our 501c3 uh, in June. So uh, that's uh, where I'm headed right now. And uh, I also get to talk all over the world on biohacking, and I really want to hear your stories because I want to present this community to the world. Um, I get talks at STEM conferences, at talks at future conferences, uh, biosafety, bioethics conferences. So I want to hear what you guys are doing, and I want to put that um, into the talks so that the world can hear about our community. Looking forward to meeting all of you and talking with you. Uh, oh, we're also going international. Whoops. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Eric Harness. Maria Chavez uh, is our CEO of BioCurious. You guys probably know us. Uh, we've been around for a while. We like to say we started with GenSpace in the same summer. So. <laughs> Uh, so BioCurious has about 50 members, entrepreneurs, and uh, citizen scientists who are working in our space. During the day, we're an innovation center, and at night we teach classes and we do public outreach to do job retraining. So we are one of the first. Uh, we do a lot of different things, but we really want to connect with you guys to democratize science and reach out. We've already been reaching out to a lot of you guys to send you things. I owe people stuff because I can't find boxes big enough to send them to you, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, can we get the next one up? I'll let Maria talk about this one. So one of the things we're really passionate about is community-based science and giving anyone of any age, of any background, the opportunity to participate. And to do that, we've done community projects. Over the years, we've launched um, over a dozen, and these are our current list. Uh, and the nice thing is they're open for anyone in the world to collaborate with us on. So Real Vegan Cheese, uh, Lab on a Chip, Cuddle Wrangling is our newest one. And that one has actually already expanded from sequencing and reassembling the genome of the dwarf cuttlefish to now also doing red abalone. Um, and our DIY Bioprinter project which has been running with Patrick DeHasselier. If Patrick will raise his hand up for... Uh, it has been running every week for over five and a half years. Patrick and I have been running that project. So we're really excited to talk to those of you who want to know how can you run community projects and get people involved. Please see me. I'm really, really happy to talk about that and talk how do you sustain these projects? How do you make people excited about them? What is the special sauce to get them going? Um, because I think that's the biggest question I get from a lot of you. So. I think trial and error, we know what does work, what doesn't work, at least for us. Yeah, and uh, thank you all. Please come talk to us. We love you guys. Uh, Digital Garage, we, we, we especially appreciate your help. You know, Sound Bio has been great. Obviously, Counterculture, our collaborator up north. Um, yeah, yeah, just everyone. You guys are so great. It's so nice to see you, finally. So, all right. Hello everyone, I'm Dan Hernandez, I represent Hookwarium. Uh, so on the map you can see where we are, we're in Switzerland, in Lausanne. Uh, and uh, we've been active since 2014. Uh, just to explain a little bit, I mean we have really cool projects, for example, a team of students built a rover and they sent it to Antarctica in a weather balloon. Uh, amazing. Ajir uh, is uh, a group all about um, genomic integrity and protection. 
Uh, over on the right is our co-president, Vanessa. Uh, lower right is, uh, we, may, we have a musical group that tours the world, um, making music with living instruments. That's the name of the group, Living Instruments. And in the middle, the bottom, uh, this is my personal passion. Um, I want to build a, an evolution machine uh, to basically uh, evolve cells to produce uh, high quantities of chemical compounds for industrial biotechnology. Uh, I'll actually be um, hosting an on-conference on it. Uh, so that's my, my passion, what I want to do. And uh, I'm also interested in, in lab sustainability. Uh, for a long time, I, I just hung around the lab and just kind of bummed around. And I kind of somehow rose to a position of responsibility. And so now uh, it's, it's, it's serious. I have to worry about, you know, how is the lab going to grow? How am I going to get money for the lab? Uh, how are we going to engage the community? Um, so I'm interested in doing all that. And I want to do it. And I want to uh, talk to everyone here about it. And uh, this has been a long minute. So uh, thanks. <laughs> Hello, my name is Beth Tuck. I am a co-founder of a new DC-based uh, biohacker lab thing. Um, we've been mainly operating out of uh, a makerspace in Northern Virginia called Nova Labs. They've been amazing hosts, but we're hoping to, within the next six months, set up our actual lab space, so yay. Um, uh, we, I, I'm a molecular biologist by training and now have a desk job and like many other people in DC, uh, don't have a space to play and tinker and get creative in the lab and so we felt um, it was a little bit embarrassing that DC didn't have a community lab uh, given that they've sprung up in all of the other cities so um, our hope was to be able to, to pop that up. Um, we support student research, we do equipment building, um, we have a lot of participation in citizen science and lots of beer drinking and socializing. Um, we do hands-on science at different fairs and festivals, and we host a lot of guest speakers. For example, um, Callan and Alyssa from the William and Mary iGEM team recently came up to speak about their projects. Um, very, uh, very focused on education, community engagement at this point. So thank you guys for your time. Looking forward to learning from all of the pros here in the room and um, get some inspiration to bring back to DC. Hello, my name is Liu. So my background is design art. Uh, a few years ago, I fell in love in, like, in, with synthetic biology. And afterwards, I wandered around the server, like biohack space, like Lafayette and Hakuayam as well. So uh, and I work and collaborate with some scientists, like biology. One of the projects like encodes your digital life in a DNA of some uh, extra fire in the center of the space. It's uh, achieve like immortality. Another project I'm working on lately is like how to uh, use different techniques, for example, like laser cutting, 3D printing, or different uh, materials to represent fashion and artificial intelligence. So um, I'm also like halfly based in Shenzhen and also like in, in Europe. So if any of you are interested to like hardware manufacturing, I'm working with the studio and also the X Factory makes spaces. So if you want anyone uh, do your hardware project, open source hardware, come come to conduct me. Talk to me. Thank you. Guys, that was amazing. A round of applause for everybody. That was Hello World. Wow, wow. Uh, I, I'm guessing you are all as blown away as I am by what just happened. Um, I probably could have watched. When we were designing this, we were like, man, is like an, like it's 90 minutes going to be too much for like an hour? Like It was just hard to gauge how long it might go. I probably could have watched like another hour of that. That was like incredible. Wow, I'm already so incredibly inspired by all of you. Um, so um, thank you guys all for that. The um, we have another session of Hello World tomorrow, okay? So now that you've all seen it, and again, for all of you that just did that, thank you for being the guinea pigs. I think that was so epic and was like the best thing that's ever happened in my life. So uh, we're gonna do it again tomorrow. Um, put your slides in the deck. We'll figure this out a little bit later, but um, so hopefully some of you that maybe were um, uh, not sure if you wanna do it, uh, we'll create time for you guys. And if, there, if we fill up the whole hour uh, tomorrow, we're gonna we're gonna do it. On, we'll do a special session of that on Sunday, and I was thinking about calling it "Until Next Time World." So we'll do it like as part of the closing. So if we fill up tomorrow, we can still do it on Sunday too. Okay. So um, thank you guys all again for that. And unbelievably, we are like on time. I don't know how that happened, but we're actually on time. So um, we're gonna take a half an hour coffee break right now, so you guys can all you saw that awesome talk and that person you want to talk to. You have time. Now this is very important. 
the next thing that's going to happen in the next session, we we'll have at 11 o'clock, uh, we're going to come back here and we have general biosafety, okay? So again, remember, we're still at MIT. And so to do any of the wet lab work, you officially need to experience general biosafety. Now, part of what's going to be cool about this, though, uh, Lorena Altamirano from EHS, she has a really inter cool interactive web-based game. So I know a lot of you know biosafety, but it's going to be a very fun kind of co operator Empetition or whatever, but it'll be a very fun kind of interactive version of doing biosafety. But you have to be there for that if you want to do any hands-on experiments. So uh, we're going to ring the cowbell, 1055, get you back in to do the biosafety. And then we have uh, Jason Bob and Todd to do a uh, code of ethics. Uh, Maria and Anna are going to do definition of a biohacker. And then really, really honored to have Marshall Gans, who's going to join us from Washington, DC. Uh, Marshall Gans is a legendary um, grassroots organizer, helped to basically develop the uh, strategy for Obama in 2008 and 2009. 12 for their winning campaigns, and he's going to join us virtually from DC to talk about uh, skills and techniques for really growing this movement. So uh, with that, uh, one more round of applause for Hello World and for all of you guys. That was incredible. And enjoy the coffee break uh, and listen for the cowbell. Thank you, guys.